In this video, we're looking at the anatomy of the elbow joint. Whether you're a med student cramming for tomorrow's test or you just found out that you tore your ulnar collateral ligament and don't really know what that is, I got you covered. We're gonna go step by step through the bones of the elbow joint, the ligaments that hold those bones sort of together or in place, and finally look at two muscles that control movement of the elbow joint. And at the end, I'll have a blank diagram so you have a chance to practice all of this to make sure you really know all of the parts of the elbow joint. So let's uh, jump to the whiteboard and get started. So here on the diagram, I want to draw the elbow joint from two different perspectives. We're going to have a lateral view as well as a medial view. So the medial view is going to be looking at the elbow joint and the inside part right here. That's closer to the torso. And the lateral view is going to be looking from the outside. So we'll start with the bones. The first bone that I have in the diagram is the humerus. This is going to be the bone of the upper arm right here. It's a single bone that goes from the scapula all the way down to the elbow joint where it's gonna meet with the radius and the ulna. Up next we have the ulna. Now the ulna and the radius are really easy to confuse between each other. So here's how I remember the difference between the two. The radius is always gonna be the bone that's gonna go from the elbow joint to the side where your thumb is. Whereas the ulna is gonna go from the elbow joint to the side where your pinky is. And if you take your thumb, you can move your thumb in this circular motion. And when I think of a circle, I think of, well, a circle has a radius. And so because our thumb moves in a circular motion, we have the radius that connects to the thumb. On the opposite side, we have the ulna, which is always gonna connect to the pinky side of the hand. And I'm not sure why, but ulna and pinky, just they feel like they go together, right? Am I right? Tell me I'm right, right? So we have the lateral view of the ulna as well as the medial view of the ulna. The other interesting thing about the ulna is it has this part that sticks out at the end here that's called the olcranon of the ulna. When you feel the actual kind of point or end of the elbow here, you're looking at the olcranon of the elbow. And the olcranon is the part that's gonna kind of wrap around or articulate with these two tubercles of the humerus. The radius, we'll see in a second, doesn't have an olcranon that's gonna articulate there. So the olcranon right here and right here is gonna wrap around the humerus and it'll be the part that articulates or actually sort of moves with the humerus whenever you bend your elbow joint. The third bone we have in our diagram is the radius. And the radius, like I said, is gonna to connect to the thumb side and it's going to articulate with the tubercle of the humerus. We see that connection right here, but like I said, it doesn't have this part that actually wraps all the way around the humerus like the ulna does. And then I'll also draw in the radius on the medial view. In anatomical position, which of course is somebody standing with their arms out to the side like this, the radius is gonna be more lateral and the ulna is gonna be on the medial side. And we see that in the diagram here. We have the radius, which is on the lateral side. It's in the foreground in this part of the diagram. And we have the ulna in the foreground of the medial view. So radius is lateral and ulna is medial, at least when we're looking in anatomical position. Now the elbow joint is an example of a synovial joint, which means there's lots of movement. And any synovial joint, we're gonna have our Articular cartilage that's going to be on the ends of all of the bones that articulate or move across each other. And the whole purpose of that is we want to reduce the amount of friction between the bones. Without the articular cartilage, those bones would be rubbing against each other, grinding each other down. That's going to cause inflammation and a lot of problems with that joint. So we've got this smooth articular cartilage to reduce the friction between the bones in the elbow joint. You can see that articular cartilage here at the proximal end of the radius, proximal end of the ulna, as well as the distal end of the humerus on those tubercles of the humerus. Now before we get into the specifics of the synovial elbow joint, let's take a look at the radius and the ulna because they actually form a fibrous joint. A fibrous joint is a type of joint that doesn't have a lot of movement. You can't really move your radius away from your ulna. There's a tiny bit of movement, but not a lot. So we need some ligaments to hold the radius and the ulna together as we're moving our arms around. We've got this long sort of sheet of ligament called the interosseous membrane and it's going to connect between the radius and the ulna and we see that interosseous membrane right here that's going to provide some stability between the radius and the ulna and prevent much movement from happening now a little bit of movement does happen right we're able to kind of rotate our arm like this and so they kind of rotate around each other but that's much less movement than for example a synovial joint like the movement of the elbow one more ligament with a similar purpose is going to be the oblique cord oblique means not perpendicular nor parallel oblique is going to be kind of at an angle and so if you look at the oblique cord it goes at an angle between 
between the ulna right here and the radius right there. On the diagram, we can see the oblique cord sort of peeking out from this lateral view, but it's a little bit harder to see. And again, that's gonna provide some stability and hold those bones together. Now back to the elbow joint, which is a synovial joint, meaning it has lots of movement. We're gonna have something called a joint capsule. Any synovial joint will have a joint capsule, which is gonna do a couple things. First, it's gonna provide a lot of stability for the joint. It's gonna kind of prevent those bones from moving across from each other. We don't want the humerus and the radius and the ulna all separating out, but it's also gonna work as sort of a capsule holding in something called synovial fluid. Now we already talked about articular cartilage, reducing the friction between the bones and the joint. Synovial fluid is gonna be sort of a lubricant doing the same thing. It's gonna prevent much friction between the articular cartilage at the end of those bones. But any sort of fluid needs to be held in somewhere, so the joint capsule, which wraps around the whole joint right here, is gonna hold that synovial fluid inside of it. But the joint capsule doesn't provide enough stability, so we need a series of other ligaments that are gonna provide more stability than the joint capsule is able to provide. The first of those is called the annular ligament, which is I think is kind of the neatest or most unique one, at least of all of these ligaments that we're looking at in the elbow joint. That's because it starts and ends on the same bone. It starts and ends on the ulna. So we see that right here, it connects to the ulna right there. It's gonna wrap around the radius and then connect to the ulna down on the other side right here. And it acts as a sort of band that's gonna, like I said, start at the ulna, wrap around the radius and connect back to the ulna. And that's just gonna sort of hug the radius and keep it in place up against the ulna. So the annular ligament wraps around the radius and holds it tight against the ulna. Another ligament with a very similar purpose but a very different structure is called the quadrate ligament. And this is gonna be a ligament that goes directly from the radius to the ulna kind of in a straight line. Now I don't have it in the diagram because it's sort of covered by the annular ligament and it's just hard to draw in because it just literally goes straight from the radius to the ulna. So here's a diagram that shows where that quadrate ligament is. Take a look, it's gonna go straight from the radius to the ulna, holding those two together at the elbow joint. So annular ligament wraps around the radius, quadrate ligament goes directly from the ulna to the radius. Up next, we have a ligament on both sides of the elbow joint. We're gonna have the medial collateral ligament as well as the lateral collateral ligament. Now, both of these ligaments aren't really one ligament apiece. They're a complex of ligaments that we call the medial collateral ligament and the lateral collateral ligament. The word collateral there just means kind of like off to the side. So we have some on this side and some on this side, similar to the LCL and MCL that we have in the knee joint. Let's start with the lateral collateral ligament. Remember lateral means on the outside, which is gonna be the thumb side and so it's gonna be the radius side. The first part of this is called the ulnar lateral collateral ligament. That was a lot. I'll shorten it to ulnar LCL. So that's gonna connect this part of the humerus over to the ulna right here. It kind of goes over that annular ligament and connects to the ulna, which is really, the ulna's on the medial side. So this is a lateral collateral ligament that's gonna kind of wrap under and connect to the ulna side. You may also see this called the LUCL, which just changes the order of what I just said. Instead of the ulnar lateral collateral ligament, it's the lateral ulnar collateral ligament, or the LUCL for short. The next part of the LCL is gonna be the radial LCL. The radial LCL is gonna start kind of on the same spot of the humerus, and it's gonna go under or beneath or deep to the annular ligament and connect to the radius right in here. And whereas the ulnar LCL held the ulna in place relative to the humerus on the lateral side, the radial LCL is gonna hold the radius in place relative to the humerus on the lateral side. Or if that was a lot to remember, just remember we've got a lateral collateral ligament on the lateral side that's gonna hold the humerus and the radius and the ulna in place on the lateral side. That radial LCL is oftentimes just shortened to RCL for radial collateral ligament. Now, I've already talked about the annular ligament, but I wanna make a point here that the annular ligament often is included in part of the lateral collateral ligament. So you could say that the LCL is made of three parts. The LCL has the ulnar LCL, right here, the radial LCL right here, and it also includes the annular ligament, the AL right there. But all that together is the lateral collateral ligament. Next, let's look at the medial collateral ligament. So this is gonna be another complex of ligaments on the medial or inside of the elbow. A few directional terms will help with this. The first one is gonna be the posterior bundle of the medial collateral ligament. Posterior means kind of towards the back of the body, whereas anterior means towards the front. So the posterior bundle is gonna be part of 
the medial collateral ligament that's more on the posterior or back side of the elbow. Whereas a lot of the ligaments we've looked at are sort of band shaped, they're these long kind of narrow ligaments. The posterior bundle, however, is more fan shaped. So it's gonna start kind of narrow right here and it's gonna fan out as it connects to the ulna right in here. So we have the posterior bundle of the MCL. Next, we have the transverse ligament of the MCL. Transverse means to sort of cut across something. So you see right here that's gonna be transverse because it's gonna cut across let's say the posterior bundle, for example, or the elbow joint itself, it cuts across the elbow joint. So the posterior bundle, which is fan-shaped, the transverse ligament, and then finally, we're gonna have the anterior bundle or the bundle that's more in front. That's gonna be the third part of the MCL. The anterior bundle is more of a band, unlike the fan shape of the posterior bundle. And it's gonna connect, again, the humerus to the ulna. If you notice, pretty much all of the medial collateral ligament is connecting the humerus to the ulna. There's no part of the MCL that's gonna connect to the radius. Remember the radius is on the lateral side, the ulna is on the medial side. As far as terminology, a lot of times the anterior bundle is referred to as the MUCL. That would be the medial ulnar collateral ligament. So if you see that term MUCL, a lot of times they're just referring to the anterior bundle specifically. All right, that was a lot of ligaments. Let's do a quick recap of those ligaments of the elbow joint. We have the annular ligament, which is connected to the ulna right here, wraps around the radius, and then connects back to the ulna on the other side, as well as the quadrate ligament, which is gonna connect directly from the radius to the ulna. Both of those ligaments, the annular and quadrate, are gonna help to hold the radius and the ulna together. We also have the oblique cord and the interosseous membrane, which are going to work to keep the radius and the ulna tight together. We, of course, have a joint capsule, which is going to wrap around the whole elbow joint to keep in synovial fluid, as well as provide some structure to the joint. We have the medial collateral ligament and the lateral collateral ligament. So the lateral collateral ligament includes the ulnar LCL, which is going to connect the humerus to the ulna, as well as the radial LCL, which is going to connect the humerus to the radius, and that's going to tuck under the annular ligament. On the inside, we have the medial collateral ligament, which has three parts. We have the posterior bundle, the fan-shaped ligament that connects the humerus to the ulna. We have the transverse ligament, which is gonna transverse or cut across all of this, as well as the anterior bundle, which is gonna connect the humerus to this part of the ulna. Last but not least, let's take a look at two muscles they are gonna control the movement of the elbow joint. Now, these aren't the only muscles involved in the movement of the elbow joint, but they're a really good example of an antagonist pair, which are gonna sort of work against each other or cause opposite movements in the elbow joint. The first is the biceps brachii. The biceps brachii starts up here in the scapula or originates in the scapula, and then it's going to insert to the radius of the elbow joint right here. When you contract the biceps brachii, that's gonna pull on the radius. If you pull on the radius right here, connected to the scapula, you pull on that, it's gonna bend the elbow like this. When we bend the elbow or reduce the angle of a joint, we call that flexion of the joint. And if you don't know some of those terms, I've got a whole video on that, which you can check out here or down in the description. So the biceps brachii will cause flexion of the elbow joint. And we have the triceps brachii, which is gonna cause extension of the elbow joint. Extension is whenever you take the angle of the joint and you're increasing that angle. The triceps brachii originates in the scapula as well as the top or proximal part of the humerus, and it's gonna insert into the back of the ulna right here. Whenever you contract the triceps brachii, which runs from here over down to here, if you think of shortening that, that's going to cause that extension of that elbow joint. They're an antagonistic pair, like I said, because they work against each other. The biceps brachii to do this and the triceps brachii to do that. And those are two of the primary movers of the elbow joint. So that was a lot of terms, a lot of structures. The elbow joint is a pretty complex joint. Actually, all of our synovial joints are pretty complex. But if you wanna learn all of the stuff, the only way to do that is to practice yourself. So here is a blank diagram of everything that I just went over. Take a minute, pause the video, see if you can identify all of the bones, the ligaments, and the muscles involved in the elbow joint. So those bones include the humerus, the radius, and the ulna. The ligaments include the interosseous membrane, the oblique cord, both of which are gonna hold the radius and the ulna together, sort of along the length of the radius and the ulna. We have the joint capsule, which is gonna wrap around the synovial elbow joint. We have the annular ligament, which is gonna connect from the ulna back to the ulna, wrapping around the radius. We have the quadrate ligament, not pictured here, which is gonna connect directly between the radius and the ulna right in there. We have the lateral collateral ligament, which includes three parts. We've got the ulnar lateral collateral ligament, 
we have the radial lateral collateral ligament and of course the annular ligament that's all part of the LCL. We have the medial collateral ligament, which is gonna have three parts as well. That includes the posterior bundle, the transverse ligament and the anterior bundle. And two of the muscles that control the elbow joint are the biceps brachii, which is gonna cause flexion of the elbow, as well as the triceps brachii, which is gonna cause extension of the elbow joint. Hey, thanks for watching and learning about the anatomy of the elbow joint with me. Quick insider fact, before making this video, I didn't know all the different parts of the elbow joint. So I learned it to make this video and now you can learn it too. And I'm gonna keep making anatomy videos, so follow along, come along for the ride. All right. Catch you next one.